Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome to Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous. Or at least the uh, first build for the backer beta. In a lot of ways, this uh, almost feels like we're coming full circle. The beta for Pathfinder Kingmaker was one of the first big projects that I tried to tackle with this channel. And it was one of my most successful projects, too, so... I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys think. We've come a long way since 2017. And from what I understand, the uh, developers over at Owlcat have really stepped things up with Wrath of the Righteous. They've basically taken the already solid formula from Kingmaker and essentially improved and expanded it in almost every regard. That said, we're just going to jump right in. Um, but keep in mind, this is an early beta, so... There are going to be placeholders, there is going to be buggy and unfinished content. Now, the first thing we have to do, of course, is make our character, and we will be custom building. And I should note that, um, while I will be filling in the gaps, the broad strokes of this character build were actually decided by the Raiders, my patrons, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. There are a ton of build options in Wrath of the Righteous even more than there were in Kingmaker, with several new archetypes and classes and races to choose from. It would have taken me weeks to settle on something myself, so I just turned to the raiders and had them help guide my hand. And uh, while the resulting character is not something I think I would have chosen myself, I do think it's actually a viable build while also still touching on some of the new content offered in Wrath. So, thank you to the Raiders, and uh, special thanks to Revenant, A Nerd in Warpaint, Antonio Hernandez, Matthew Holmquist, Nathan Welch Jr., and Valenruck. Let us assemble our character. First up, we're going with an Oread, but unfortunately, this is the beta, so they do not yet have portraits for any of the new races. So, we'll just tag the generic dwarf. And like I said, um, there are a ton of new options here. Uh, not just new classes, but even the pre-existing classes now also have new archetypes, with almost every class having between five or six archetypes to choose from. In our particular case, we're going with the Cavalier. And not just the Cavalier, but the Beast Rider Cavalier. Which, as near as I can tell, is almost identical they just uh, gain the ability to ride stranger mounts at the cost of heavy armor proficiency and the free mounted combat feat, which we'll account for at later levels. After that, we're obviously going to be an Oriad. I already mentioned that. And um, right off the bat, I will say I'm not a huge fan of our default appearance here but I'll also acknowledge it is clearly a work in progress. At the moment, it's um, very weirdly proportioned. It's like a human torso stuck on dwarf legs. And honestly, I'd rather just have it as like a metal skinned dwarf. I'm sure we'll be able to improve that once uh, they've added the customization options, sadly not yet available. From a gameplay standpoint, we get slow movement, 20 foot base speed, but never slowed by encumbrance or armor. Keen Senses, which is plus two to Perception. We are both resistant and have an affinity for Acid. And we get to choose a Heritage for our Oread, which we will do right now. We've got three different options to choose from, with each one offering a slightly different set of attribute modifiers and a single spell-like ability. And the Raiders have guided my hand towards Iron Soul, which will net us plus two to Constitution and Wisdom, but a minus two penalty to Dexterity. So we're definitely going slow and steady. We'll also pick up the Lead Blades ability once per day, which is nice, but certainly not a game breaker. Next, we've got ability points, and I'm going to be honest here. I'm going a bit off of my normal... Um, approach, because usually I like to really stack something up to 18 or even 20 during character generation. 
and then shore up the rest of the stats over time. I think the general idea here is that um, we want our guy mostly focused on defense with a bit of offense, but we're kind of going to be a an armored command post. Half our actions are going to go towards supporting our allies as we scream commands and shield them from attacks. That actually dovetails pretty nicely into uh, also serving as the face for the party because calves are not really uh, skill-based characters, but they do get access to persuasion. And so we're going to kind of lean into that. And speaking of skills, we get three. Athletics, mobility, and persuasion. <laughs> so it's as simple as that. It really hurts me to uh, skip out on perception, but we can compensate for that. And speaking of compensation, no, not that. Get your mind out of the gutter. As I said before, being a beast rider cost us free access to both the uh, heavy armor proficiency and mounted combat feats, but we still want both of those, so we are going to be picking them up over time. Mounted combat actually will not be useful to us until a much later level, so we're going to go ahead and grab heavy armor proficiency. We really are going to just be a big pile of walking armor plates. And backgrounds. Another option that is completely new to Wrath of the Righteous. Uh, essentially, these all serve as sort of mini specialized feats. Uh, most of them grant new proficiencies and small bonuses that change the way your character works in some way. There's a ton of options here, but um, given the choices made by the raiders, I have ultimately decided to go with Andoran Diplomat. Based on my research, Andoran is uh, a diplomatic parliament, formerly of the Cheliax Empire, which is currently led by a paladin of Iomade, and... Uh, they have essentially embraced the tenets of equality, the idea that every individual has equal worth and no one should force their ideals on someone else. Everyone should be allowed to make their own choices. Everyone's opinion matters, within reason, of course. Given that the uh, Raiders have also nudged me towards the Azada path, uh, it just seems to make sense. That's the path of chaotic freedom. So, yeah. And not to mention, as a bonus, it nets us plus two to persuasion. Next, we've got order. And uh, in this case, the raiders have guided my hand and we're going with order of the lion. Not, I think, what I would have chosen. I probably would have gone with the slightly more martially oriented order of the sword. But in retrospect, order of the lion actually fits our character a little better. This grants us a wider array of team support abilities and makes better use of our charisma. Not to mention, um, I don't think we'll actually get to it in the current beta because it's a level 12 ability, but the Order of the Lion also eventually uh, leans towards a sword and board play style, eventually gaining an ability that lets him share his shield bonus with all nearby allies, which does sound pretty fantastic. Once again, I think it really kind of uh, plays into the idea of being a mobile command post, just uh, trundling around the battlefield, soaking up attacks and buffing allies, and, you know, occasionally hitting something. Next, we've got our bonus feat from uh, the Cavalier's Tactician ability. It's not one of their more prominent features, but over time, Cavaliers will gain an assortment of free team feats, and they can actually share these team feats with the rest of their team temporarily. Again, really kind of leaning into the whole mobile command post thing. And given that we already know that our guy is going to be using a sword and board fighting style, and that I know off the top of my head we've got at least a couple of companions who are also going to be wielding shields, we're going to start off with Shield Wall. That's not to say we're going to uh, completely neglect the offensive abilities, we're just going to wait until a little later because we need higher base attack bonuses. And in one case, we actually have to bump our dexterity. Next, we've got one of the major decisions. Our animal companion slash mount. And uh, right off the bat, I'll say the raiders have pushed me towards Smilodon. Not a bad choice. Uh, 
It's fast, it's got a lot of offense, and it's a cat, and I am somewhat partial to cats. Full disclosure though, uh, the developers are planning to have dinosaurs available as mounts in the final game, so I was prepared to overrule the raiders and just go with that if it was available in the beta. Sadly it is not, so we're going with the uh, fur-covered blender instead. Now, there is one glaring issue here, which you may have already noticed. The Smilodon is too small for us to actually ride it. It needs to be large, which it will be eventually once it hits level 7. That's the point where our uh, mobile command post will really become mobile. Now we move into alignment, and um, I was initially leaning towards chaotic good, if only because we're following the Azada path. But I think we might actually be better off with neutral good, which matches our Andoran background. And um, I should also note, I have not actually played much of the beta, so I don't really know what sort of choices we're running into. Ultimately, I don't think it's really going to matter if we're lawful or chaotic. I think the main important thing here is that we are good. So we'll start middle of the road and then we'll uh, see which direction we drift in over time. Obviously not much to say about this here. Uh, they have not yet implemented most of the customization options for Oread. I am at least making a token effort to try to get us to look vaguely like that dwarf. What do we have? Uh, dark leather brown and kind of an ochre green. Let's see if we can emulate that. Yeah, close enough. I'll take care of it. Voice disabled. I am this character's voice. In fact, um, much like with Kingmaker, there's going to be minimal voice acting, so I'm basically everyone's voice. Yay. Then we've got our name, and uh, I decided to kind of flex my nerd cred here. We are going with Creed Iron Fang. Though I almost went with Tenacious Creed. I'll also note my um, original plan was actually to name our Smilodon Iron Fang. But ultimately, uh, during my test run, I gave him a different name, and I kind of liked it better. But we will get to that in... Uh, uh, just a little bit later down the line. No point in getting ahead of ourselves. And there we have it. Creed Iron Fang. Relatively mobile and reasonably competent commander of the Fifth Crusades. Again, not a build I would have come up with myself. But uh, I'm curious to see how viable he is. Make way! Coming through! Fetch a healer, quick! Hey, somebody! We got a wounded fighter! Can we get a healer over here? My, my, would you look at this? But why would you drag a wounded fighter into the middle of the festival square? Couldn't he be carted off somewhere else, like... Oh, I don't know, an infirmary? Or an accommodating ditch? Cool. He seems nice. Make room. Everyone step back. Now, what's the matter? What happened to him? You hear the stern voice of an elderly man, but you're so weak you can't even turn your head to look in his direction. Hmm, that wound looks nasty. Who did this to him? Demons, Prelate. We found him barely alive outside the walls of Canabras. The walls, you say? The enemy doesn't usually stray so close to the city. We must fortify the defenses. And you, hold fast. Don't die. We'll see you, right?
We'll get you patched up now. But first, you there, guard, take his weapons. Bearing arms is not permitted during the festival. Wounded or not, everyone must abide by the rules. He can get his things back after the festival. Let me guess. Lawful? <laughs> nice priorities there. Oh, Inheritor, leader of our troops, the sharpened edge of our blades and the unyielding strength of our armor. Iomade, I beseech you. Grant your mercy. Heal his wounds. Healing light envelops you, but your pain lessens only slightly. I won't give up that easily. Here, here, that's the Crusader spirit. Ordinary healing magic is having no effect. Someone call for Terendalev. You there, yes, you. Stop dithering and gopping and make yourself useful. Go and get Terendalev. Prelate, of all the... Have you forgotten that you're speaking to a lady? I am not a lackey to be ordered about. I'll get her. Terendalev, has anyone seen Terendalev? Be quick about it, before it's too late. The old man leans over you. Now, who are you? I don't remember seeing you before, and I have an excellent memory for faces. Also, you're uh, made of metal and shaped like a giant bell, and there's a 400-pound saber-toothed tiger following you. I think I'd remember that. Well, given that we are uh, almost certainly sworn to serve the current elected ruler of Andorin, who himself is a paladin of Iomade, I think this is a pretty simple answer. I'm a crusader. I came to fight demons. Oh, Iomade, save me from green recruits. They come without planning, without preparation, and they die before they even see their first real battle. I don't know whether to laugh or cry at the utter waste of it all. Yeah, I can tell we're going to get along just great. My dear prelate, please, for the sake of the festivities, leave this poor man in peace. He has been through enough already. Go on, I'll take care of him. <laughs> All right, as you wish. You are our protector, and a dragon at that, so I shall defer to your wisdom. But be on your guard. I've been informed he was wounded near Canabras. That means the demons are prowling just outside the walls, and the city is crawling with their spies. Others may be able to relax on this holiday, but not you or I, not the defenders of the city. Muttering discontentedly, the old man walks off. A beautiful, silver-haired woman leans over you. She seems ageless, her face wholly unlined. But centuries-old sadness gleams in her eyes. Pain retreat, life, vanquish the shadow of death. Body, cast off your suffering. The longer she speaks, the stronger her voice becomes. There. Ugh. Thank you for helping me. I accept your thanks, but my work is not yet done. Who are you? My name is Terendalev. I am the protector of this city. Are you really a dragon? You don't believe me. Perhaps I should retake my true form and engulf this square in my ice breath to win your trust? The woman lets out a melodious laugh. Pay no mind to my current guise. I appear this way when I walk among the people. I would hamper the festivities if I tried to attend in my true form. Fair. Uh, what happened to me? I do not know yet, and that troubles me. I am not entirely sure what the demons did to you. 
This wound is no ordinary injury, and it was inflicted by no ordinary weapon. I have rid you of your pain and restored your strength, but only time will allow you to heal fully. I see. Can I go? Certainly, but be careful. I have managed to get you back on your feet, but I have not yet healed you fully. Alas, sooner or later, your pain will return. But do not be discouraged. You will recover, I promise you that. Tomorrow, come to the cathedral and say that you are expected by Terendelev, protector of Canabras. We will find a way to help you. But for now, put this out of your mind and enjoy the festival. They are all too rare in this time of war, and merriment is one of the best medicines. Well, that was uh, quite a start to our new adventure. And now our goal is apparently to have fun. Well, too late, Wrath. I'm already having fun. Day of the City. Canabris is a city poised on the border between two worlds. On the one side, the ordinary world inhabited by ordinary people, and on the other, the world wound, the demon's foothold on Galerion. Heroes from across the world flock to Canabris to aid the Crusader cause. The protracted war offers little cause for celebration, but today is the anniversary of the city's founding. For today, the city's main square has been cleared of marching troops and given over to performers and carnival games. The townsfolk deserve the chance to forget about the bloodshed, if only for a day. Neat. Well, let's uh, wander around a bit, meet a few new faces, and uh, play a few games. Oh, and uh, we need to tend to our poor tiger. Officially upgrade him to a proper animal companion. Now, as with uh, many of the mechanics in Wrath of the Righteous, the animal companion system has been significantly expanded uh, since Kingmaker. Animal companions, and by extension mounts, are now essentially treated as additional members of your party. They gain levels, skill points, feats. They even have their own archetypes. And in this case, our main goal here is to turn our Smilodon into a nice counterpoint for our slow but steady commander. Playing to our whole uh, defense-heavy angle, we're going to go with Daredevil, which will uh, also favor the Smilodon's natural mobility and make him a whole lot more slippery on the battlefield, uh, getting Iron Fang wherever he needs to be, while we can also use that Pounce ability we'll eventually be getting to also hurl ourselves into battle at a moment's notice. Now, obviously, a lot of this isn't really going to matter until we actually hit level 7, at which point we'll finally be able to ride our mount. But uh, that actually kind of works out pretty nicely, because by then we'll have actually picked up the uh, main mobility features that we'll need to get around on the battlefield. There's still some nice stuff after that, but nothing we'll really worry about right now. We get two skill points, and I think we're going to drop those into mobility and perception, because that will actually help offset uh, Creed Iron Fang's two main weaknesses. He may not be able to spot hidden objects, but his loyal companion can, and I guess meows to alert him to them. I will note um, it was tempting to go stealth, but ultimately that would be pointless because from what I understand, both the rider and the mount would have to pass a stealth check to avoid being spotted, and Creed is never going to pass a stealth check. Dude is uh, essentially a walking scrap pile. I'm less certain about athletics. Um, I'm honestly not sure how that would benefit a mount, but I may have to look into that. Then we've got feats and... Uh, while they have called the list to uh, pare it down to just the things that would actually be relevant to an animal companion, we've still got a lot of options to choose from here. 
And uh, I will say, my initial impulse was to go for Weapon Finesse, because our Smilodon has 14 Strength, but 18 Dexterity. But then I, uh, then I realized that uh, that will actually change once we hit level 7, because once the Smilodon hits that Growth Spurt, its Strength will actually eclipse its Dexterity, at which point Weapon Finesse would become completely useless. So instead, we'll uh, just stay focused on defense. That is one of the slightly weaker points on the Smilodon. And uh, while I am very curious about the fact that he can get armor proficiency, I don't know if they've actually implemented any magical barding or anything yet. So we'll just play it safe and go with dodge. Now we get to name our Smilodon, and uh, as I said, I was originally going to call him Iron Fang, but... During testing, uh, I went with a different name instead. For those of you who don't follow me regularly, I have many cats, and uh, the bitey one is Kaiser. That's the name I used in the uh, brief test run I did yesterday, and I just got used to it, so we're going to stick with it. Welcome aboard, Kaiser. I will crush anyone who hurts you. At any rate, let's get back to adventuring. By which I mean, let's go play some carnival games. Oh, right. That was just the upgrade to Animal Companion. We still have to uh, do an actual level up here. Oh, and uh, I guess that was it. Okay, back to adventuring. Let me just uh, double-check something real quick. I want to make sure I remembered this right. There we go. Ah, yeah. At level 7, his strength will boost up to 21, and his dexterity will drop to 15. That is why we did not take Weapon Finesse. I was just hit with some uh, pervasive doubts there right at the last second. Had to make sure I, uh, I knew what I was actually talking about. All right, let's see what we got here. That would be the Dark Throw, one of the three things on our list. Left, aim further to the left. Quacha! Get in, bullseye! Ooh, what about a hundred paces? Can you do it? I'm, I'm gonna say no, uh, not with a 12 dexterity. Grubby peasants and their grubby diversions. Why did I even bother coming? Nice to meet you. Stranger. Well, technically I'd say these are all strangers, but uh, maybe this one is particularly strange. I am the answer, but what is the question? Yeah, yeah, that, that is pretty strange. Uh, let's go punch that thing. Sock him one. Oof. I will, but not because you told me to. You call that a punch? Here, let me show you how it's done. Oh. What is...
Oh. <laughs> um. Discari's here. Discari himself. Blimey. One minute we had a dragon. The next, bam. She was gone. The halfling's armor is splashed with blood, and he is armed to the teeth with a sword, a blade, a hatchet on his belt, and a crossbow on his back. His voice sounds familiar to you. Care to lend me a weapon? Sure thing. Here, take this. The halfling holds out the crossbow. Best crossbow I've got. The person who made it said it could pierce the hide of a demon lord, even. I've seen you somewhere before. Yeah, you have. You owe me your life. I'm the one who found you outside the walls and brought you inside to be healed. He looks you over. I see they patched you up. Good thing they did it before the attack, or else you'd have been done for. Who is Discari? You must have had a good drubbing round the head, brother. Discari's a demon lord, the most fearsome enemy of all crusaders, and all living things, come to think of it. What's the situation in the city? Who knows? Everything's on fire, crashing down around our ears. The place is crawling with demons. Looks like a whole army attacked the city. We're sitting ducks. All right, I'll try to fight them. Good luck with that. Try not to get eaten now. The halfling's words are drowned out by a terrible rumbling and the rustling of countless tiny wings. Silver Dragon Terendeleb, the defender of Canabras, fell in battle. Hardly surprising, as she had to fight the demon lord Discari himself. He willed the land to part and swallow all who dared to stand in his way. But the war was still far from over. Thank you, mysterious narrator. It's uh, good to know how to properly pronounce those names. I think I got most of them right. Also, uh, I'm going to go on the record here and say that uh, probably could have gone better for us, but, um, you know, here we are. There is no adventure without adversity, and uh, we've got quite the adversaries here. So we're uh, apparently in for quite an adventure. Oh, right. I'll also note, um, obviously there was a bit of jank with the whole intro cinematics and everything. This is a beta. Uh, I should stress that. We're definitely in for a few rough patches here and there. It's all just part of the uh, beta experience. Hello there. Holy mother of... A small woman with messy brown hair winces in pain, uttering a stream of curses through clenched teeth. She is pinned to the ground by a couple of weighty boulders. Hey, hey, stay with me. You actually got pretty lucky. You fell down into a black hole, but at least you're not on your own. You've got a great companion. The young woman in knight's armor studies the rocks intently, clearly trying to work out how to move them. Everything's going to be just fine. Uh, tell me something. Can you feel your legs? I feel them all right. Wouldn't say no to a little less feeling in them. My ankle's killing me. But my back seems to still be in one piece. My head, too. That's all that matters. Now we're going to... Hey! Spotting you, the knight reaches for her sheathed weapon. But after scrutinizing your face momentarily, she raises her hand in greeting. 
Fancy meeting you down here. You're the one that Terendalev healed today, right? You aren't injured, are you? Will you help me get her out from under the boulders? Of course we will. Hold on. We're going to get you out from under there. Summoning all your strength, you manage to lift the rocks up enough to free the wounded woman from the rubble. The woman feels her leg. Damn it all. I think it's broken. Ah, oh, well, I've had worse. I'll just make myself a splint out of something. Fishing a piece of twine from her pocket, she gets to work. Thanks for the help. I wouldn't have lasted long on my own, stuck under there. I'm Anivia Tirabade of the Eagle Watch. I was overseeing security at the Festival Square. I thought maybe spies or demon worshippers might have something nasty planned. What actually happened, though, now that I did not see coming. I don't think anyone could have been prepared for that. Well, I'm Sila, paladin by the grace of Iomade. I crossed the whole continent to come to Mendev and fight demons. And, well, I've been fighting for a while now. Sila's expression darkens. I don't even want to think what might be happening up there in the city. Canabras has lost the protection of Terendolev, and of the Wardstone, too, looks like. It's a relic without equal... It was placed here personally by Iomade's herald with a goddess's blessing. I really wanted to go see it, to pray before it. But there's no point worrying about a stone when there are people dying in the streets. Yep, things are looking grim enough, but don't lose heart. Wardstone or no, dragon or no, Canabras will never give in. Simple as. Anivia's eyes shift to you. Well, we've introduced ourselves. What about you? Again, not much of a secret there. Creed Iron Fang. And this is Kaiser. We came here to fight the Abyss. A fellow crusader. Welcome, brother. This is great. I would have been happy to have any companion in this. But it's nice to be stuck down here with somebody who's my kind of crazy. It's a good thing you've still got your faith, because right now, to be totally honest, faith's probably the only thing we do have. Anivia tightly ties off the twine on her improvised splint, and, leaning on a stick, holds herself to her feet. Now then, I'll hobble my way out of here somewhere. The city ain't far, only 30 paces or so. That's if you're going straight up, of course. I'm afraid we're going to have to go the long way round. To summarize, there are three of us, with five working legs, three pairs of decent hands, two clear heads, and one made of wood. That's mine. Underground monsters, beware! Sila winks. Anivia, you stay behind us. You're in no fit state to fight. If we do come up against anything, the two of us will try to manage on our own first. Well, onward. May the good deities lead us back to the open sky soon. Here's open. And we've got our first party member. Lovely. Let's take a quick moment to get these taskbars in order. Get them a bit uh, more uniform and easier to use. Look at that. I guess the uh, Cavalier's Tactician ability requires you to give a specific order. 
That is not how I thought that would work. I assumed it was uh, more universal, akin to uh, the way it worked with Inquisitors. Hmm. Well, that is good to know. And in this case, it still mostly works for us. Sela here is also a sword and shield wielder. So I can bolster our defenses at a moment's notice. Let's reset our formation. That'll work. Look, Hulrun put all the confiscated weapons in this chest. Take a look. Maybe your thing survived the fall. Oh, yes. This will do nicely. I don't think we actually have anyone who can identify this cloak, because uh, none of our current guys are trained in Arcana. But that's fine. Just from looking at it, I am fairly certain that's a cloak of resistance. Let's go ahead and get the sword and board equipped. Crossbows back up. Oh yeah, and look at that. The cloak is still unidentified. I usually run a more skill-heavy main, so that's rarely a problem, but in this case it's okay. Like I said, I'm fairly certain we know what this is. Yep, yep. Definitely a cloak of resistance, or uh, some variation thereof. And what is this? Hmm. No info tab. Engraved Lucky Bracers. These bracers grant the wearer a plus one luck bonus to AC and a plus one luck bonus to savings throws. Lovely. Okay. You know, that might... Um, I'll have to look into that, but that might be... One of the backer items. That's a pretty nice one, too. Between that, a nice suit of plate mail, and a sturdy magic shield, we should have a pretty solid AC. Moving on. Who's there? The fine apparel of this young half-elf woman is torn and stained with blood, dust, and dirt. However, she holds herself with such dignity that you would be forgiven for thinking you were at a high society party and not in the dank catacombs under the city. Her fingers grip her rapier hilt with confidence, ready to draw it at a moment's notice. At her feet lies a dead body, so mutilated that at first glance, it's hard to tell if it's animal or human. Relax, friend. We're not demons or cultists. Don't poke my eye out with that thing, all right? We fell down here during the attack. I'm Sila. That's Creed and Anivia. The tiger is Kaiser. We're looking for a way back to the surface. Really? I'm ever so glad to hear it. The girl relaxes slightly, but she keeps her hand on her sheathed weapon. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Camellia. I was also in the square when... When... Her self-control falters for a moment, and you glimpse the fear beneath her mask of perfect placidity. She licks her lips nervously. I can scarcely believe it. How did all these demons get into the city? I thought... Naively, it now seems, that the Wardstones protected us from attack. And Terendalev? I can't wrap my head around it. Yes, well, not many could withstand a strike from a demon lord. Not even Terendalev. I can't argue with that. We're fortunate to be alive, albeit underground. 
Discari himself has come to Kenebris. There's no mistaking that ugly mug. Terendal have tried to fight him, but what could she do against a near deity? Even the Wardstone was no help. Our city used to be protected by powerful forces. But now, Anivia shakes her head. We've seen how powerless they truly are. Camellia finishes Anivia's thought with ruthless precision. Henceforth, we shall have no one but ourselves to rely on, I suppose. Tell me more about yourself. The girl gives an elegant shrug. Who am I? Just an ordinary citizen who decided to take a stroll through the square on the day of the festival. But that's not what you wish to know, is it? You most likely wish to know whether I'll be a burden should you ask me to join your group. No need to worry about that. I can assure you that I am skilled with a rapier, and also possess some knowledge of magic. She touches the polished snake skull amulet that hangs around her neck. That's probably normal. What happened to this poor man? Who is he? I don't know. He must have been in the square when the disaster struck. I tried to revive him, but he was already dead, sadly. He didn't get these wounds from the fall. Sela's eyes warily scan the area. Be on your guard. Whatever killed him likely hasn't gone far. Anivia peers at the dead man's face. Hang on, I think I know him. His name's Aravashnil, the egghead from the library. He was a good lad, even if he was kind of stuck up. May his soul rest in peace. So, do you want to join us? Certainly. Survivors should stick together. It's only sensible. Who knows what else could be prowling about in these caves? All right, then. We need to keep moving. There must be a way back up to the surface somewhere around here. That's right. It would be the height of foolishness to survive a demon attack, only to perish under a pile of rubble. Let's see if this poor bloke has anything useful on him. Not to sound like a heartless brigand or nothing, but we kind of need all the supplies we can get right now. Ooh, hold on. Together we stand. Camellia is a healer. Spirit Hunter. Huh, interesting. Can't say I'm familiar with that one. You know what? We've already got three melee fighters. Let's go ahead and slap that crossbow on her, at least for the short term. We're going to have trouble jockeying for position. That will, of course, become less of an issue once we can actually ride around on Kaiser. And as we pick up more party members and start fine-tuning our exact party loadout. We'll go ahead and plop the spirit weapon over here. I'm going to have to read up on that one. Though it looks pretty straightforward. Let us continue. We are coming up on the hour mark, though, so uh, I am going to have to start thinking about winding things down soon. Ah, the lighting tutorial. Do we now have access to a light spell? What's on your mind? I wonder... We do. Obviously, it's uh, better to have hands-free lighting. 
And it's not like Creed is going to be hiding, ever. I heed the voice of the spirits. Our first foe. And it's dead. And the fact that combat hasn't actually ended would imply there are more out of sight. Aha! Just as we suspected. Shield line at the ready. Obviously, we have the optional turn based tactical mode enabled. Uh, that is at the request of the Raiders, my patrons. And I would say personal preference, too, because I prefer this over the real time with pause. That said, uh, I will try to keep things moving. Ah, now we have two actions. I was wondering what was going on there. I guess that was the pre-combat surprise round. How about charging? Oh yeah, that works. Man, it has been uh, ages since I have played or run in an actual tabletop campaign, so this is going to take some getting used to. The first victory of many. Or not. I really have no idea what we're getting ourselves into here. To clarify, uh, I did do some light testing before I started recording, but I spent most of that time in character generation. There are a lot of options. Gameplay-wise, uh, I actually only went about a half hour in. Well, do not fear. do not waver. Charge. Yeah, yeah, and we're definitely in the uh, pre-combat surprise phase, so we only get one action, either movement or standard. I guess there's no dash or run action. I suppose in uh, Pathfinder that would just be converting your standard into another move action. Thank you, Anivia. With that 19 damage hit, I begin to suspect that you may be here to babysit us. Oh no, a centipede. What will we do? I appreciate your eagerness to die. You are dead. And yet, still more foes await us, lurking in the dark. Truly, a glorious victory. Ooh, bracers of armor plus one. Not useful for our current party, but still nice to have. Yeah. Camellia uses light armor, so we'll hold on to this until we find a wizard or something. I guess that was just a little optional loot cache. Oh, 
All right. All right. Kaiser, kill. Will be so much easier once Creed can just cruise around on Kaiser's back. Go for their heart. Hey, unacceptable. You do not stab Kaiser. Or whatever that was. I don't I don't know how flies attack. Biting, apparently. Thank you, Anivia. I think it's safe to say she is definitely our training wheels for the tutorial. Oh, that's... that's interesting. Potion brewing and, uh, scroll scribing. Did... did I read about crafting being in Wrath? I want to say that's new, but I've played so many other D&D &D games lately. They're all kind of getting cluttered together. Hmm. Either way, that's pretty cool. Death is life's final surprise, and I enjoy surprising people. Really? What's your alignment again? Neutral. Yeah, okay. Loving that soundtrack so far. Right. Five foot step. I will say, as far as turn based uh, tactical combat goes, I do usually prefer gridded or hex-based because it makes it easier to tell where your guys are and where they can go. But this is pretty intuitive. I do think it could uh, benefit from some line-of-sight indicators and other general UI improvements, but it's obviously a work in progress. Huzzah! We have denied Anivia the kill. Alright, we're just past the hour mark, so we do need to find a nice stopping point. Looks like we've got something going on ahead, so let's uh, push on just a little further. No, I can't just walk away. It's got to be here somewhere. You struggle to make out the man's features in the gloom. As soon as he steps into the circle of light, however, 
you realize that you have never encountered a creature like this before. The stranger looks like the work of a vivisectionist who attempted to stitch together a lizard and a man. The man notices you and freezes. The curling horn protruding from his head casts a malevolent shadow on the cave wall. Wenduog! Lan, did you find it? The woman looks just as strange as her companion, like a cross between a cat and a spider. When she catches sight of you, she immediately drops into a fighting stance. Her movements reveal the lethal grace of a wild predator. Who is that? The do-gooders here to save our mongrel souls, no doubt. Lan stops her with a gesture. Wait, they might know what's going on up there. Demons are laying waste to Canebris. Lan's expression hardens. If things are as bad as you say, then we all have to hurry. Wenduog looks you over, considering something. You didn't come from the direction of the shield maze. Damn it, I couldn't care less about what's happening on the surface. But the maze... I realize you have your own troubles, but we need to be in Kenebris. People are dying up there. Please, show us the way out. What are you, anyway? Tieflings? Wenduog's face twists scornfully. Tieflings are the descendants of people who sullied themselves by mating with demons. Our ancestors would never sink that low. We were the underground crusaders, the children of the crusade's finest. Sadly, underground crusaders is a bit of a mouthful, so people usually just call us mongrels. Wendoog lets out a disdainful huff. You just love repeating that, don't you, Lan? Mongrels. That's what the Uplanders call us. But we call ourselves Neethers. No matter what you call us, it's not going to stop our horns, hooves, or tails from growing. I've never heard of underground crusaders before. In Kenebris, they're called the Mongrels. People say that they come up to the surface at night and eat anyone foolish enough to wander around after midnight. Sela turns to Lan and Wenduog. To tell you the truth, I thought you guys were just a tale to tell kids at night. Wendoog gives a contemptuous snort. That's human gratitude for you. Our forefathers suffered the consequences of demonic corruption, all to protect Mendev and Golarion. And for what? So we could become monsters used to frighten children. Lan sighs. Every mongrel has their own take on it. Our chief, for example, thinks of us as something like a reserve military force. He thinks we're standing by until the moment we're needed, and when we emerge on the surface and save the day, all the people will see how good we are, and they'll love us for it. He leaves that last part out when he talks about it, of course, but uh, it's easy enough to read between the lines. What is this place? This is the hall where we remember the glory of our forebears. Sorry about the mess. It doesn't usually look like this, trust me. Sometimes we even wipe the dust off the exhibits. This is where the relics of the First Crusade are displayed. Our lives are short. Our glories are quickly forgotten. But this place helps us to remember that we are just as worthy as anyone else and that our lives are not lived in vain. Anivia lets out a low whistle. The First Crusaders, you've been down here that long? That's crazy. What are you doing here? That's none of your... We're looking for a holy sword. It was here in the center, sticking out of a rock. Lan frowns. The sooner we find it, the better. Some kids from our tribe took off for the shield maze. 
They figured it had collapsed, and now it's their time to go up to the surface, like all the legends foretold. Except they don't have a clue what's waiting for them up there. They're not fighters. And Sol, the chief of our tribe, is dead set against it. He says that now isn't the time for the underground crusaders to take up arms. If we get the Holy Sword, we might be able to change the chief's mind. Wenduag huffs a breath. It's a fool's errand. None of us will be able to hold the sword, let alone use it to save anyone. It's not an ordinary weapon. It's made from righteous heavenly flame and will burn anyone who touches it. Do you think you're special, Lan? I'll pick it up with my teeth and tie it to my hand if I have to. It doesn't matter. An angel's sword and a troop of stalwart mongrels will be able to work a minor miracle. He chuckles. Speaking of which, you're still here, Wendu, which means that deep down, you know it's possible. Wenduog shrugs and turns away. What about this maze? Does it really lead to the surface? Yes, there are other ways up, but they are far from here. And after the earthquakes, there's a good chance they've collapsed. But the maze... There's a legend among our people that when the walls of the maze fall, that will be the signal for us, the underground crusaders, that the time has come to go up to the surface and fight the demons in the final confrontation. Wenduog snorts. Until then, people say that the maze is shielding us from taking rash actions. I'm the only one in our whole tribe to have been in the maze, and even I don't know if it's true. But the further I went in the maze, the fresher the air became. That means that it really must lead to the surface. When the ceiling and walls started shaking, the young ones in our tribe lost their heads. They figured the maze was going to collapse, so it was time to go up to the surface. They grabbed whatever weapons were to hand and ran off toward the maze. His eyes are filled with genuine concern. They think the maze is no longer a danger to them. They've been listening to Wendoog too much. I warned them a hundred times. You hear a hint of emotion in Wendoog's voice for the first time. But it was no use. My words just went in one ear and out the other. A sword of holy flame? How did it wind up down here? It came here with its owner. A long time ago. 50,000 gongs, to be precise. 70 years ago in Uplander time. Wenduag rewards Lan with an irritated glare. 50,000 gongs ago, our forebears found a dead angel here, along with the bodies of his comrades. The tribe gave him a dignified burial, and they were laid to rest with their weapons. But the flaming angelic sword was stuck in a rock and no one was able to pull it out. It burned to the touch, like real fire. So the rock was placed over the angel's grave. It should be here somewhere. Maybe the angel will dig himself out and find the sword for us. That might be our best shot in this chaos. Lan, watch your tongue. We'll find this sword faster if we work together. I'll help you. Lan's expression brightens. Thanks. An extra pair of eyes can only help. The sword will be easy enough to spot. It looks... swordy. Help us, and in return, we'll get you out of here. Now we're talking. Let's get to work. It's a good thing we all bumped into each other, isn't it? What, you want to find the sword quickly so the underground monsters bring you back to the surface? So be it. Whew, okay. So, we uh, have finally found our first solid lead on how to get out of here. Not to mention a potential weapon that might just come in handy once we find our way out. That said, uh... We're well past the hour mark at this point, and I think we found our way to a good stopping point. 
Let's hit the pause button for now, but we will pick up here next time. I'm actually really looking forward to this. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official YouTube and Twitch channels, the official social media feeds, or the official store pages. As always, links are in the description. <laughs>